Welcome to Catholic Viewpoint Faith, Hope, and Love, exploring how to live life to its fullest in God's wonderful love for all people. holiness, goodness, and peace of God, we are enabled also to love one another. Let's join our host, Father Michael Kiernan. Welcome, viewers, to our uh, presentation today. Delighted to be with you, and thank you for uh, looking in on this show, uh, Catholic uh, Viewpoint, Faith, Hope, and Love. I'm Father Michael Kiernan, and I always enjoy having an opportunity to share some views and thoughts with you. Today we're going to talk about the beauty of life, the greatest gift that all of us have. Everyone holds on to their life and rejoices in it. So we thank God for the gift of life. And may your life be blessed and uh, holy today in whatever you're doing. And a little prayer now to start. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of life. For all the people who live in a variety of ways, the talents and gifts that you give to each one everyone having their own personality, their own DNA, their own goodness, and their own sweetness. Bless the individual life that all of us have. Help us to use it for your glory and for the benefit and goodness of others. Help us to rejoice in the lives of all those around us and to live our lives fully today in service of others, in the joy of doing uh, things that we like to do, and in being uh, good citizens and holy people. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And today to speak about life, we're delighted to have with us Marie Leatherby, who good is morning. the director of the uh, Sacramento Life Center. And uh, of course, if you uh, don't know about Leatherby's ice cream, then you probably haven't been in Sacramento very long. Right. So she's connected with the Leatherby family. And so, Marie, uh, welcome uh, today to uh, Catholic Viewpoint. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It's an honor great. to be here with you. Well, I've seen you in action over the years uh, and the great things that you've been doing. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe then lead into the uh, great work that you do in the Life Center for sure. many women? Sure. Well, um, I come from a very large Catholic family. My parents are from the Midwest. They weren't originally Catholic, hardworking people, um, you know, from a very small town in Iowa, and um, God-fearing people. But uh, we moved to California when we were young, and um, when I was probably about seven years old, my dad was um, somebody challenged him to look into the Catholic faith, and um, he ended up converting. And we had five children at that time, and of course converting to Catholicism. He had five more, boom, 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 right mm -hmm. after that. So I come from a family that celebrates life and people and babies, and it was a great foundation um, for the work I do. I always wanted to grow up and be a missionary, and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, that was my dream and goal. I wanted to be a Catholic missionary and go change the world. But, um, you know, when I got into um, high school, um, Kind of was a rebel. I like to say it's my Irish side came out, but uh -huh. uh, no. Um, and uh, just kind of went, went a different direction. Didn't grow in my faith and uh, ran off and lived a life of fun. And, and, um, and probably when I look back, things that I wasn't proud of, like a lot of people. And um, later in my life, when I figured out Things weren't going the way I planned. Um, I look back at my faith and have spent, spent lots of years reading and rediscovering and the richness and trying to reform my conscience. And, and that kind of, I think, all led me to you know, where I am today. 
Um, and that's a beautiful thing, uh, what you're mm -hmm. saying now, just before we go further in the Life Center work, uh, mm -hmm. is uh, that you had that uh, time out, as some people say. Mm -hmm. I met many people in uh, my years as a priest who uh, dropped out for one reason or another, mm -hmm. or at least lessened their commitment, or didn't know that much about their faith. And right. then they, as often is the case, uh, looked at things again yes. and then became very committed. And so I think that's an encouragement to all our viewers today that wherever your life is or whatever you've done or whatever, uh, you know, that little uh, bumper sticker, uh, be patient. God is not finished with me yet. True. And so everybody should be looking at their lives and conversion. Uh, well, it's not only what you experienced there, but in fact, uh, St. John Paul used to talk about even being converted right up to the end of his life. So we're always yes. growing in our faith and asking questions and wanting to know more it about God. It is so rich and deep and never, never ending journey. Yes. And uh, it's exciting, you know, once you get back into it, just um, becoming the best version of yourself. And, and um, you know, there's nothing that you ever did that was so bad. Yes, it's yes. Important. And there's a lot of people doing that today because people are asking questions and even mm -hmm. the society we live in and all the ups and downs of uh, the modern times, uh, people are beginning to have sometimes a ha-ha moment or yes. a moment of uh, something happens in their life, the loss of a loved one or True. their own getting older or going through a divorce or some other difficult situation right. in their lives some where they uh, ask themselves, what's all going on here? Yes. And then they... Uh, uh, have a moment where they begin to go back to the faith or if they're not involved in the faith and didn't know anything about it they happen to be talking to someone who leads them to yes. it and then wow it just takes off from there and great blessings come to their life it, yes it really does um, I was fortunate enough my family does pilgrimages to the Holy Land to Rome to other holy sites and I did a couple of those which really, really brought me back and, and reevaluate. And um, so I always encourage Catholics, go on retreat, go on pilgrimage. It's, it's wonderful mm. for anyone to uh, take a look and know that the way, you know, when you think you're in control, your life doesn't go the way you want. And when you hand it over to God, He, uh, he surprises you. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. And the beauty is that God's control is a gentle control. We often think of the word control as, you know, I'm going to make you do what mm. I want, and Never. that sense of control. But his is a gentle, humble control. Yes. Uh, control of the cross, in a sense. Uh, and so in that sense, no one ever has to be afraid in submitting oh, no. their life to the Lord or accepting True. the Lord as their leader and guide. And they'll just find true freedom in that. True freedom. As opposed freedom. to the freedom of the world. Right. The world can weigh you down, and it, when you start detaching from worldly things, uh, there is so much more freedom. And it even led me, you know, spent years of reading saints and the catechism and all those things. Um, I'm now at 10 years as a secular Carmelite, which... Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't know that, so there's a new, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that very grounded, very in faith constantly, and what a joy that's been. And people that knew me before might chuckle, but um, it's, it's been a great, great journey. Well, that's a great um, encouragement to people. I'm sure people who do know you now and they talk to you about uh, your journey and uh, development, mm -hmm. it's probably a great blessing for them as well. And, yes. and uh, just very briefly, what would uh, being uh, the Carmelite uh, Third Order be mean? Uh, well, um, we're part of the World Order of Carmelites, but we're in the world. So you just want to live, uh, you know, life for the church. We do the divine office every day. We try to go to mass daily and just uh, contemplate times of prayer um, just to really uh, work in the church. And, and uh, so kind of my ministry is what I'm doing now, but it's just to show people the richness of, of the church. Well, that's a faith. beautiful concept in itself because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes we lament a little bit today the, uh, that there's less uh, sisters, uh, nuns, uh, people call mm -hmm. people different names, but sisters, nuns, uh, and so on. But as a, a sister was saying to me not too long ago, well, don't get all pessimistic. 
uh, the Vatican Council and many other things that have happened mm -hmm. uh, in the last 30 or 40 years have opened up new avenues precisely along the lines that you're talking about. Uh, the Carbonites, there's Third Order Franciscans, there's mm -hmm. all sorts of different uh, new orders. Uh, yes. And uh, all of these are doing great work, mm -hmm. while, as you say, in the world. Yes. And in fact, the, uh, one of the big challenges for the church today is to have people in the world, uh, for one of a better term, yes. uh, really live their faith and put it into practice because uh, it's easy for someone like myself, uh, but for people like yourself who have a family to take care of and make a living and mm -hmm. go to work and so on, uh, to, to implement the faith. But actually, uh, I notice in the RCIA program, people who come to the Catholic Church, they hardly mm -hmm. ever tell me that there was any priest or anyone else who inspired them, but it was someone at work. And oh. so, you know, if you're there and maybe see somebody sees you doing this, doing that, and so on, how you deal with things and so on, they begin to ask themselves some questions. Maybe they come to you and say, oh, why do you uh, respond like this? Why do you respond like that? And you say, well, my faith. And they say, well, tell me more about that. And but one thing or another, they're anxious to learn more about the faith. So yes. that is uh, the goal of the church, actually, that yes. lay people, by their baptism, as priest, prophet, and king, yes. and the great gifts you're given in the Holy Spirit, uh, in the place where you work and live mm -hmm. and socialize and so on, that you can bring the, the faith uh, yes. to uh, those around you. Right. That's a beautiful thing. So yeah. I'm Evangelize to that. Uh, through love and and just when necessary, use words. You know, Indeed. Kind of, yeah. Oh, yes, that's the great uh, statement of St. Francis. St. Francis. And, and, um, that's my... Yeah. Uh, we have the old saying sometimes, uh, monkey see, monkey do. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly by the example of people, uh, we're far more impressed than just by their words. So yes. that's a beautiful concept. And so you've been promoting life and uh, yes. the blessings of life. And I guess a lot of that comes from, uh, it's not, as we were saying earlier before the show, uh, it's not just a religious uh, call, but life is, is a gift for everybody, whether they're religious or whatever particular religion they are, or even yes. if they're, uh, you know, I've known some fine atheist people who are people of great principle and, yes. of course, who value their own life yes. and therefore would say, well, if I value my own life and want to keep it as long as I can and so on, why would I not want to promote life right. every place I possibly can? Yeah, it's our first right. Everything else comes second, as far as I'm concerned. If you don't have life, you can't do any of these other great ministries that, yeah. that are out there. And uh, a baby's always a joy. I mean, we yes. help thousands of women um, in difficult circumstances, many of them, most of them. And so it's not that we judge or have a lack of compassion. It's supporting them through a time um, that uh, they feel lost and alone or often and don't know where to turn. And... It's just been a beautiful uh, gift. Maybe without mentioning any names, but could you give like a little summary of one or two situations? I know you've had hundreds and yes. so on, and we hear about them at the great uh, Life Center dinner, and it's always one of the most enriching evenings of the year. But uh, just one or two maybe of a particularly difficult uh, situations, but you were able to help, and you're always there. I yeah, know that's the beautiful so... thing, no judging, no criticism. Right. Yeah. Come on in. Order and, and it's Yeah, there's so many. And it's amazing to see women come in, you know, heads down, tears. They find out they're pregnant. You can hear them crying. They, you know, they're not in a place where they feel they can do this. And um, through the love and support, they leave. And, you know, after an ultrasound and seeing the baby and bringing the dad in who gets excited and, and just to feel that, it's so... Uh, not what society is telling them or family or friends oftentimes. And um, to get that voice, one voice of encouragement can just change a life forever. So it's very mm -hmm. exciting. But Yeah, I was, had a yeah. lovely experience the mm -hmm. other day at a place where I work where this young woman who was pregnant, she came in all excited and she uh, puts this paper in front of me. She said, look, she said, look. And she shows me the sonogram, you know, and the, the baby and so on. Seeing and that she was baby. so excited uh, to show it to me and everybody else around there. So there's joy now. In her case, everything is very good. Uh, 
But as you say, there are some very difficult situations because of yes. financial situations, Financial, um, young, um, feel that they have an education or that uh, this will ruin their life. Um, and we all know we're all here and um, many pregnancies are unplanned and we show them, no, you just make a different plan and there's a new life, your life isn't ending. And so many women can go on and, of course, still get their education or dreams and careers with children. We know sure. that, that uh, the world's telling them it's going to stop and you'll never amount. To, you know, all those voices that they're so unsure. Um, you know, a couple, I mean, just this week we've had, um, you know, a young girl come in whose mother was pressuring her to get an abortion, thought it was going to ruin her life. And, and that's sad to see a parent, you know, thinking that this is the best decision and that the, the you know, young women knew that that's not what she wanted mm -hmm. and, um, you know, reconnected her with her father and he was supportive of her. And so there's lots of difficult situations like that. But in the end, she's, you know, doing well and um, her mother's coming around. Of course, when that grandmother sees that baby, she's, they're mm -hmm. always joyful, but we help people through those kind of times. Um, you know, young couples that are immature, we love to help people form families where they, uh, if the pregnancy was terminated, that would never happen. And just the joy um, of, you know, we ended up getting married and we're on our second or third child and we're happy where, you know, the ending of that first pregnancy would um, have, you know, this family never probably would have happened. And that oldest child, you know, we see all the children and we've been around 45 years. Mm -hmm. So we see grandmothers coming in now or women bringing their daughters. And, and so it's just a joyful thing to see generations and happiness and the joy that the Life Center just brings. It's just yeah, the success of people's lives, and I'm sure then yeah. making that decision to go in and check with you and get the various tests and so on, and then get the help and then make the decision to go forward. That is indicating a strength and maturity of the young woman, and hopefully she has a young man with her as well. Yes, but some family members Sometimes for sure. Sometimes adoption and then once is Once they best. go with that route, uh, mm -hmm. they uh, it sort of sets them on a path that I can do anything. Uh, it does. I, and I will do what I think is right, uh, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. So they have a strength there. They get empowered. Them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they can do it. I mean, we thought, you know, many women or most women may have had a pregnancy that was unplanned and the f knows the fears and that comes with it. And uh, to be empowered and know you have a team of people behind you is so important. Where, uh, you know, like 95% of the women that come to us that may be unsure or undecided will have their babies. And um, we've never had one unhappy. But if they were to go into an abortion clinic first or some of these, um, it's really the opposite statistic. I think it's 90% will have an abortion sure. because they don't feel, you know, they're told it's okay and this isn't the right time and all those voice, you know, it's such a vulnerable time. So women, owe it to themselves to really look at all their options. And, and uh, when you see the smile and joy on their faces, you know it's a life is what we're all about. And, yeah. and the Holy yeah. Spirit, yes. How, how true. And mm -hmm. the, the positive uh, presentation that you make is, is wonderful because sometimes, uh, and you wonder maybe if, how this has developed, but sometimes uh, people see uh, pro-life people or encouraging people to have their babies as being against freedom or against women yes. or whatever it is. There was something about the war on women there a couple of years ago. Right. But in actual fact, you know, all we do is, is to uh, uh, have love and appreciation and mm -hmm. openness and respect for a person regardless of their income level or their work situation right. or their faith or non-faith. Uh, no questions asked, uh, yes. just uh, come on in. and Every life is precious. Mm -hmm. And we often do get uh, marginalized women that say, wow, y you made me feel important for the first time in my life. Yes, yes. Well, that's beautiful. I know you have a scripture passage that you wanted to uh, read oh, here yes. today on the um, uh, beauty of life from the uh, 
Yes, this is one of my favorite. Um, in fact, I just sent this to my grandson a couple days ago when he was going through a hard time. It's Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. Uh, you formed me in my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my very self you know. So that was... Ah, uh, yes, that's isn't beautiful. That, yeah. yeah, we are all wonderfully made, and every life is precious. And I think that's a very important point that maybe a lot of people don't understand, you know, apart altogether from this particular discussion, that they are wonderfully made, and uh, that each person is created in the image and likeness of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of us go around having to prove ourselves, uh, you know, to others, or uh, have success in the world or whatever, which is okay. But uh, to realize that, you know, you are perfectly made and that you have been knitted in the mother's womb and all these beautiful things you share, then yes. that, that gives one a dignity and respect for oneself and, of course, a respect for others. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that is just a marvelous thing and I think can help us uh, with some of the even depression things and yes. uh, negative things in our lives. Uh, where we think we're no good and I'm not as good as you and i got to try to prove that I am. And, and a lot of people are looking, uh, especially young people, to show that um, they, they matter when in actual fact you matter just because of who you are. Right. Not because you're already you matter. that way or you're, you're a child slim of God. or you're this or you're that. Mm -hmm. You're just so true. a holy person created yes. by God. Yeah? Yes. So that's so important. Yeah. And uh, I think you had another one, one there. Psalm 8, verses 4 to 6 and 10. When I see your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars that you set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and a son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him less than a god, crowned him with glory and honor. O Lord our God, how awesome is your name through all the earth. So how beautiful there that sentence that you have made uh, each of us a little less than God and actually the teaching, of course, of our faith is that we are higher than the angels and that uh, God has created us and related to us in a way that he doesn't relate even to the angels. Yes. And then the whole thing of free will and the talents and gifts that we have. So that is indeed beautiful. So on a given day, if a person walks into your Sacramento Life Center, which is located at? It's at uh, 2316 Bell Executive Lane. So it's uh, our brick and mortar clinic is in the Arden Arcade area which is a very needy area. Uh, when a woman walks in, uh, all our services are free and always have been. And we just have functioned since 1972 on the goodwill of people that know the work we do is so important. Um, so she'll get a free pregnancy test, ultrasound, STD testing if she needs it. We help her get uh, in medical care, uh, insurance if she needs it and just resources in the community. So many women don't know what's available out there to help them, um, whether it's food, clothing, shelter, housing. Uh, we're there for them. We do educational classes. We have material needs for that baby. That's always a big fear. Um, you know, how am I gonna afford diapers and things like that and formula and clothing? And mm -hmm. we help take care of all of that for them for the first two years through I the know. goodness of people. I know, your place is like a little tip store. It's like a little store, and they and get to go in, and there's so many good people in the community that make um, booties and blankets and, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. So they, the women feel dignified and loved, and there's people out there that love them. And then uh, as a follow-up after that, uh, you have at least two great places, uh, Mother Teresa Maternity Home and then yes. Bishop Gallegos, named after Venerable Bishop uh, Gallegos yes. now. Holy and of course man. founded by the great uh, Monsignor Cavanaugh. Yes. And uh, so those places, uh, I mean, to go there once in a while and see the several mothers and their babies in that about three month period, I think it is, that they, they are there. They stay until they help them get on their feet. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and again, the, the love work. that... Uh, both of those places uh, exude. Yes. I mean, it's, there's nothing harsher, uh, and people are treated with great respect and yes. freedom. And all yes. That. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, sometimes those women have had uh, difficult lives, and it's the first time uh, many of them are homeless or had nowhere to stay or kicked out of their homes when they're pregnant, and 
they, they do beautiful work, and we work hand in hand with them when we have a woman in that situation. Yeah. yeah. When we hear reports, uh, especially at that dinner and other occasions, it is so uplifting, and one goes out of these things uh, uh, being uh, inspired uh, about not only that the people have come through it, but that now they're a better, stronger, yes, more complete person. Yes. I mean, and that's really the goal, too, is to have them feel the love of Christ. Uh, if they're not on a good path, sometimes being a parent and seeing, you know, feeling the love of Christ that we share with every woman that comes in can really change a life and uh, make yeah. them better people. And, you know, it's, it, that's always great to see that, you know, if they were to terminate a pregnancy, they're going to stay right in the same place they are. I mean, sometimes God gives you this to help you uh, come out of your situation and, and be a better person. So we let every woman know that too, that, uh, you know, life can be so much better than where you are. Yes. And sometimes a child does that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just came across a little quote the other day where somebody said, a nice lady said, I'm pro-life because I believe we have a responsibility to create a more welcoming society for expectant mothers and their unborn children. Mm -hmm. Despite the way it is promoted, there is nothing liberal or compassionate about legalized abortion. And then another uh, lady said, uh, I'm pro-life because abortion did nothing to help me after being raped. Abortion is not the right solution for women mm. who find themselves in any situation. So again, uh, positive comments by people who have gone through this. Yes. And I think we really need to listen to uh, those people more. And of I course, agree. they often become great promoters of uh, life themselves and helping other young people and so on uh, in difficult situations. So yes, we've beautiful. never had a situation so difficult that you had to terminate. We've helped every single woman that's come in. And if they make that choice, they often come back for help and support. Um, we help post-abortive women deal with that, and they'll come back to us for another yeah. pregnancy. And you have a beautiful so, center there. Everything is uh, spacious and welcoming. Yes. So God bless you with all that you do. And I Thank you. Uh, wish you well in the years to come. And I know... Uh, you and your staff just bring such warmth Thank and uh, love and, and uh, caring and trust for the people that you, you. you serve. People can learn more about us at sacklife.org. Read some stories and uh, oh, that's support us. Sacklife.org. Sacklife Sacklife yeah. Thank well, you, Father. Well, I certainly Father. would invite uh, viewers to uh, reach out to people who may have situations and not be afraid and tell them that they're most welcome at the Sacramento Life Center. So with that, let us conclude with a little prayer today. Lord God, we thank you for this um, gift of uh, time together to talk about the beauty of life. You are the maker of all. You adorn all creation with splendor and beauty and fashion human lives in your image and likeness. Awaken in every heart reverence for the work of your hands and renew among your people a readiness to nurture and sustain your precious gift of life. Bless us in our own life today in the things that we do, in the way that we are able to rejoice in all that we are, to see ourselves as beloved children created in the image of God. Help us today and always through Christ our Lord. And now thank you viewers for uh, tuning in today. It's always a blessing to have you. I hope everything goes well for you in your uh, life uh, today. And until we uh, meet again for our next uh, show, God bless you, peace and joy be with you. And again, thank you, Marie, for everything. Thank you very much for having okay. me. Thank you for watching Catholic Viewpoint, Faith, Hope, and Love. For more information on the Catholic way of life, please go to your local parish, where priests and other friendly staff are happy to serve you. Also, your diocesan website provides great information on parishes, programs, and much more. You can experience Catholicism on relevant radio at 1620 a.m., and be sure to explore the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops website and EWTN programming. You may email us with questions or comments at catholicviewpoint at gmail.com. God bless your faith journey at whatever stage you are at this moment. Till next time, God's peace and joy be with you and all you love.